So uh, today uh, we will uh, start with uh, residues and duality. And um, well, I, I will present some classical approach uh, for following Kempf. Um, but then in the exercises, uh, there is an alternative approach uh, due to jo John Tate, uh, which is m m much more elegant, I, I think. Um, but these exercises are only due in March, so uh, don't worry. Uh, and uh, mm, what are the uh, residues? Uh, well, I, I hope you all know the residues from complex analysis, one-dimensional analysis. Uh, but here we'll have some homological definition, uh, and then um, we'll argue that it is the same as uh, the complex analytic definition um, in case the base field is complex numbers. Uh, so um, we have this exact sequence. Uh, uh, the Dualizing sheaf canonical class uh, goes to uh, its rational uh, sections. B big quasi coherent sheaves goes to the principal parts of this. Uh, and uh, it gives rise to um, uh, the boundary, a cocoa boundary map uh, in the um, first comma. So, so, sorry. Uh, uh, from global sections uh, of uh, this principal part sheaf. Uh, uh, to the uh, first cohomology of the canonical class, uh, that is just the base field K. Uh, and um, if we have uh, mm, uh, a point. Uh, well, recall that this uh, sheaf of principal parts is the direct sum over all points of our curve uh, over the corresponding principal parts at at, at particular points. Mm. Oh, sorry, principal parts at C uh, of uh, the sheaf of differentials, uh, and in particular, uh, given one particular point. Uh, you obtain um, uh, a morphism like this. Um, so for any point, uh, there is a morph morphism from principal part at this particular point uh, into the first cohomology. Uh, sorry. Uh, that is just the ground field. Uh, and and th th this morphism uh, is called uh, the re residue uh, at at this point. Вот если на примере посмотреть, например, у меня есть форма dp делить на p, где p uniformizer. Ну, dp делить на p плюс dp делить на p квадрат. Чему оно будет равно в рамках вот этого вычета, в рамках определения? We'll compute it right away. Uh, we'll start computing this right now. Uh, this is our mm, next theorem. Я просто само определение хочу понять. Вот если есть форма вот такая из двух слагаемых, вот просто формально это будет, если p это uniformizer, у меня будет получаться форма единица делить на p плюс единица делить на p квадрат, если at, at this point, yes, certainly. But then one over yeah, five yeah. Four, zero is due. Residue. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, so the, so the, the, this map is just the uh, sum over residues uh, over all points in our curve. Mm. Okay. Uh, so mm, we're going to prove. Uh, the following theorem uh, that 
the residue uh, at a point um, um, is a uh, k-linear. Um, my opinion that is evident. Uh, also, uh, the residue um, at a point uh, is zero if uh, our rational uh, section uh, uh, is regular. Uh, for neighborhood U containing this point. Uh, and this is also evident uh, just because there is there is no, no there is no principal part. The principal part is zero. Uh, and now the non-trivial part is uh, that if T uh, is a uniformizer um, at at this point. Uh, then uh, the residue uh, uh, at this point of uh, T inverse dt is one, uh, and the residue uh, of T negative and uh, dt is zero uh, for n uh, bigger than one. Okay. Um, so we have to prove only the third claim. Uh, and um, to this end, uh, uh, again, we recall uh, the, the, the basic construction. Uh, um, for uh, a locally free uh, sheaf F uh, on on C. Um, we had um, uh, a short exact sequence. Uh, you pull back uh, F to the square of our curve um, from the first projection. Uh, then you twist by the diagonal. Uh, and then you um, uh, just restrict to the diagonal. Okay, uh, and uh, from 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 this, uh, we did used um, the uh, co-boundary map from uh, the f f first cohomology. Uh, so, sorry, from from F tensor, uh, the dual dualizing sheaf uh, to the first cohomology um, with coefficients in F. That that the tensor. Uh, the structure sheet. Okay. Uh, and uh, in particular, uh, when um, uh, F was equal to uh, the um, uh, to the du du dualizing sheaf, uh, then uh, we obtained. Um, This delta going from uh, the structure sheaf that is uh, OC tensor OC inverse uh, to the first cohomology um, of the dualizing sheaf uh, tensor OC, uh, and we, we know that the first cohomology is <clears throat> well. The, this is the, the canonical isomorphism uh, and. Um, uh, well, well let, let's denote uh, the canonical generator of the first cohomology uh, by E. So, so the um, identity section, or the, the constant function one goes to um, E tensor one. Okay. So E, uh, the canonical generator of um, first cohomology of the dualizing sheaf. Uh, okay. Uh, and um, 
now uh, this was a reminder, but uh, what we uh, have to, um, well, well, we first want to compute uh, the residue of uh, T inverse dt. Uh, th th then we'll check that uh, the, re the residues of um, the high higher poles uh, vanishes. Okay, uh, so for uh, T inverse dt, uh, we need to uh, to compute uh, the differential um, um, delta for the case uh, when uh, yeah so so before we applied it to um, um, to uh, the dualizing sheaf, uh, and uh, that's what I have to do. Uh, so, um, um, see for uh, again for the dualizing sheaf. Uh, so, so we'll obtain a map from um, uh, the second projection of the for, for first pullback uh, of this twist by diagonal, restricted to diagonal. Mm, but we, we know that this is uh, the a dualizing shift that tends are uh, the dualizing shift inverse. Uh, and this is OC. Uh, but what we, we we need to compute, so, and we already know this. That this is our delta that we know. But we have to compute it in the local coordinates. So to re, re, recalculate it, uh, coordinate C, uh, coordinate T. Okay. Uh, so um, we know that uh, T T is a, a generator of uh, omega C, uh, well, in a neighborhood uh, containing this point. Uh, and um, mm, so, so, so mm, the, this push-pull uh, would twist of the by, by diagonal received to the diagonal uh, is the following composition of operations. Uh, so this is uh, um, how to say it. Uh, well, just um, dt um, times. Uh, this coordinate t uh, of some point <clears throat> c1 minus t of some point c2 uh, and um, then uh, you invert this because you, you take expressions with poles on diagonal right uh, and and then you receive it to the diagonal uh, so you take this modular uh, the functions uh, vanishing at diagonal. Uh, well. Okay. Uh, th this is the, the definition. We have to compute this. Uh, okay. Uh, and uh, on, on the other hand, we know that this is uh, um, omega c tensor omega c inverse, uh, and omega c inverse ha has uh, the generator uh, like dt inverse. Dt inverse is um, the generator of the tangent bundle of, of this um, um, at this point. So this is what is dt uh, tensor um, like d over dt. Uh, and um, mm, mm, well, 
А куда пропадает Проблин. информация от C1, C2? Это, да. Again. Вот а слева в равенстве uh -huh. есть зависимость от точек C1, C2, а справа yes. она уже отсутствует. Как она исчезла? А, ah, because uh, you then evaluate at the diagonal, right? Uh, so C1 equals C2 after this. So when you say the model of functions vanishing at diagonal is the same as well to, to take this and and then say C1 equals C2. Okay. No, so well, how to say that? C1 equals C2. Then regularity will be equal. Yes, and th th that's what I have to compute exactly. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Uh, so. Mm. So, so what do we do? Uh, we compute the mm, the, the the co-boundary map of this, uh, and this goes to um, mm, well. Sorry, I'm. <laughs> I'm repeating always the, the same thing. Uh, uh, how should I say this? Uh, mm. Oh, sorry. Uh, Mm. Yeah, sorry, I don't know what else to say. Uh, so anyway, this goes to mm, in the notation uh, we introduced uh, at the previous page. Yeah, th then this goes to the generator e, e tensor one. Uh, fine, uh, and um, then uh, uh, th th this was over the whole diagonal, uh, and, and then uh, we can evaluate or just specialize to uh, any point, uh, and uh, then we, we see that. Uh, Well, how does it? Well, I don't know. Let's say that. Well, locally we have coordinates mm, with local coordinate t. Uh, the c corresponds to t of c is zero, okay. uh, and uh, then uh, this. T of C1 minus T of C2 inverse uh, will be just uh, T inverse. So, so uh, and so, so we're computing just the delta of uh, DT over T, uh, and this will be. Um, just e the canonical generator. Yes. So in this in this tensor product, dt. Well, okay, you can write it. Dt tensor uh, one over t, if you want. Yes. Yes. So, so, so if you want one over t is the generator of the tangent space corresponding to d, d over dt. 
Понятно, спасибо. Окей. Okay. Окей. Uh, okay. So, so the, this implies that there is a residue uh, of C at, uh, uh, at C over T over DT is one by definition. Uh, okay. And now we have to compute uh, the residues of higher poles and to prove that they are zero. Mm. So now n is uh, at least two. Uh, and um, we will uh, use the higher power uh, of our curve. Yeah, mm. Oops, sorry, yeah, again. Uh, DT over T, yes, thank you. Uh, so here we will uh, use uh, C to the power n plus one, uh, and inside we'll have uh, m many diagonals, diagonals now. Uh, so we'll use diagonal delta one, two, uh, and delta one, uh, three, and so on, delta one, n plus one. Uh, so they are divisors, but, but, but they intersect now. Uh, and we'll have long exact sequence, um, the pullback under first pro, um, projection of the canonical class. Then we'll twist it by the sum of all those these diagonals. One, two, plus three, so on, plus delta one and plus one. Uh, and then we restrict uh, to those diagonals. Mm. Uh, restrict it to the union of those diagonals. Okay, uh, and um, then uh, we'll have uh, again the long exact sequence of cohomology, uh, in particular the co-boundary morphism. Uh, maybe let's go to the next page. Mm. So the co-boundary morphism will go from uh, the projection uh, to um, uh, how to say to, to all the other coordinates. Uh, Mm. How to say it? Uh, well, maybe not one uh, mm, of the pullback twisted by the diagonals. Restate it to the diagonals. Okay, uh, and uh, it go, goes to the first cohomology um, uh, of, of um, nth power of our curve with coefficients in the push forward of the pullback, and then it's really constant as we as for, um, two weeks ago. Uh, um, uh, maybe just the tensor omega. Uh, sorry, sorry, no, that's the tensor structure sheet. Uh, o C to the power. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, mm, but but now we know that this is uh, mm, the same as the first cohomology of C itself. With the constant with, with the dualizing sheet, right? Just just because we uh, somehow do nothing, we we mm, uh, we pull back from the first projection and push forward uh, along all, all the remaining factors. So so it will be like constant sheet. So it will be a tri tri trivial uh, 
vector bundle with, with the mm, with with any fiber equal to the first cohomology of uh, our curve with the lighting chief coefficients that is also trivial the ground field okay uh so, so we know that um, there is such a co-boundary co homomorphism uh, and we can specialize it at, at any point and now now there are many points to specialize uh, so given collection yes yes и что вы говорите, yeah, yeah. оно тривиальное, mm -hmm. что дальше, какое ход рассуждение? Well, well, we just had, had such, such a proposition a uh, couple of weeks ago, that uh, if you have two, two varieties, uh, like X and Y, and you take uh, their product, and there is a projection to X, and there is a projection to Y, uh, and you have a sheaf here, uh, and you push-pull it uh, to, to Y, uh, th th then uh, you obtain um, the tri tri trivial bundle, uh, so the structure sheaf of Y tensored the cohomology of F. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the uh, claim to which you go. Uh, okay, so given a collection of points uh, C2 and so on, C n plus 1 in. Uh, the, the second factor um, mm, we can specialize uh, delta at this collection uh, and um, mm, we obtain uh, just the, the usual co-boundary homomorphism uh, delta well, before we had only one point, and there was a carbonic homomorphism at, at this one point. And now we have a divisor, uh, the sum of those CIs uh, from mm, the sky skyscraper sheaf, uh, the dualizing sheaf twisted by the sum of those points uh, and restricted to, uh, well, maybe the union. The union of those points, uh, eyes, uh, to the first, or maybe Altan would say that I need to take global uh, sections uh, to the first cohomology uh, with coefficients in, in dualizing sheaf. Uh, okay, mm, and we we, we want to compute this. Uh, mm -hmm. So well. We, Mm. So our goal is to compute uh, delta at uh, some multiple point, n times one point c. So th this will be the desired residue uh, at c of uh, t to the minus n uh, dt just by the same argument вот в определении мы писали что надо главную часть рассматривать мы еще принципы описали а сейчас мы uh, where? вот если от, отвернуть там на первую страницу yes вот как, когда определялся вычет uh -huh. мы брали течение и мы писали принцип омега c Yes, it doesn't matter because uh, the, the regular part does not contribute anyway. It doesn't matter. Mm. Yeah, or, or, or only the poles contribute. The, the residue of the regular part is zero anyway. Uh, okay, uh, and uh, we want to prove that this is zero, uh, and uh, mm, it will be zero since uh delta sum of ci's uh, will be identically zero when uh all ci's are distinct 
Почему у нас вот точки совпали, Проблема. когда мы себя рассматриваем? Мы написали, что а... дельта равна выйти. So again, just how we argued before to, to compute uh, uh, with T, T inverse, uh, the, the, the same argument says that T, T to the minus N will be this co-boundary homomorphism uh, at, at the main diagonal uh, when all the points are the same. But to, to compute it, we... Uh, um, mm, I would de deform this main diagonal uh, to, 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 to many uh, different diagonals. Mm, yeah, when uh, only C C C1 is equal to C2 or C3 or C4 or so on, but all those C C1, C2, C3, and C4 are di different. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> now, now if, if you happen to no know that this Mm, co-boundary morphism away from diagonal is zero, identically zero, then it must be also zero at the diagonal because it's a section of homomorphism of some sheaves. So if this homomorphism is identically zero on an open subset, then it's just zero. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so we have to compute this co-boundary homomorphism when all the points are, all the points are distinct. Mm. Okay, uh, so we take uh, uh, a form omega, a uh, rational form, uh, that is um, dt over um, the pr product of all differences. Uh, t of um, c1 minus t of uh, I mm, inverse. So once again, when all the points collide to, to C1, then we get just uh, T to the power of negative N. Okay. And now, now we def deformed this mm, mm, monomial T to the negative N uh, to, to the product like this. And for the product like this, we already know how to compute because they all have simple poles. Okay, uh, and um, then uh, uh, the co-boundary uh, of this po of this form, mm, well, evaluated uh, the at the main diagonal. Uh, where all the i are the same as C1. Uh, um, mm, uh, and th th this is equal to uh, the sum uh, of mm, classes mm, from i to 2 to n plus 1 uh, of uh, dt uh, over uh, t minus uh, T of C i. Okay. Mm. Mm. Okay. So so now I have to compute this. Mm. And uh, what is this? Uh, this is mm. maybe I should say the the sum of classes. Uh, and this is the sum of residues. Mm. А вот этот класс как гомологии, это где он лежит? In the first cohomology of the dualizing shift, that's just numbers. So it's just a number. It's just the sum of residues. Первый как гомологии CN, вот это проекция на первый проект. Сверху написано. I don't, I don't see uh, don't see what you mean. So just once again, in the first cohomology with, with coefficients in um, the dualizing sheaf. So just, just in numbers. 
Okay. Uh, Спасибо. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, now, uh, the, the only thing is, is it uh, correct? Or let me see one moment. Uh, this is the form uh, with a big with a big denominator. Uh, uh, Mm. Mm. Uh, sorry, one moment. Uh, mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, So I, and I, I need the big denominator. Yeah, I need the product in the denominator, uh, and uh, I missed it here. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Вот это 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 точки на c в степени n. Декарт он произведение n кривых. Yes, yes. А вот t это координата на одной кривой. Yes. А что? Ну, а на какой из них? Well, they're all copies of the same curve, right? Uh, so, um, ah, they all so yeah, they have the, the, all, the, all the same coordinate t. Okay. Uh, mm, okay. So, so once again, I have a, I have a small confusion uh, with this uh, big denominator. Uh, so, so what do I want? Uh, I want to take the sum. Uh, uh, mm. Yeah, and, and then here I have the same product uh, like this. А произведение там внизу и вверху какие границы? It's the product over um, uh, the points uh, from second to the last. Mm -hmm. We have. Uh, the, the first coordinate t of the, of the first point uh, and um, we also have the coordinates of all the other points t2 t3 3 and so on okay uh, uh, вот если мы сумму yeah. возьмем получается просто вот эта, вот эта сумма она равна просто n плюс 1 минус 2 умножить на dt делить на произведение ведь после того как mm -hmm. мы возьмем произведение уже от цита Ничего зависеть не будет, мы уже по всем цитам просуммируемся. But these are classes at, at the poles. Uh, yeah, uh, so these are classes of the, of the poles at, at those points. So they are just residues at CI of uh, DT over the product T minus uh, of the eye uh, like this okay uh, 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 excuse me I am confused because you have yeah. here uh, a, a sum and the product over the same mm -hmm. uh, index i and they say mm -hmm. yeah it should be fixed and then uh, I do not understand what uh, where uh, does this formula come uh, 
where does this formula come from? So uh, do do you apply some kind of Leibniz rule or or what? Uh, mm. Oh, so you we would take this this form which uh, which has the denominator of degree uh, of degree n, yeah, uh, and and then we uh, take uh, the sum of, of its residues uh, at all the poles. Yeah, that, that's what happened. So it had it has poles at um, c c two, c three, and so on. And you just take the sum of all its residues. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I, think so I should so say there's a J, I don't know. But. Uh, uh, so uh, this uh, C1, uh, C2, etc., there are some fixed uh, points on my curve. So yes. uh, the mm -hmm. denominator is a constant, uh, as I understand. Mm. Uh, um, how, how do you mean? Uh, it's uh, I don't know. For for example, if uh, if n is uh, two, yeah, then you take uh, dt uh, over uh, t minus t uh, two uh, times t minus t three. Okay, and then you take its residue at uh, t equals t2 plus its residue uh, at t equals t3. But uh, the point, uh, I, I think that C1 is also fixed. Uh, uh, fixed point. Okay, if, if, if I don't know how to say it. Uh, it, uh, so the coordinate of C1 is T, okay? Uh, and uh, yes, C1 has coordinate T. Okay, actually your uh, example explained it to me and uh, so from this I can derive all the rest. Okay, it was for N equals two. Uh, and n n now the claim is that uh, the, the sum always vanishes. Uh, the sum of n uh, residues uh, is identically zero, um, j j just because, uh, mm, well, maybe it's an exercise, but it also follows from Lagrange mm, interpolation formula. Mm. Because uh, mm. if you if you take uh, a, 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 well mm, an extra variable, uh, then you take the product uh, over mm, uh, Minus uh, T J over uh, the product uh, of uh, T I minus T J uh, and the sum over all I, uh, then um, this will be identically one uh, independent of this uh, variable X. Мы же вот, чтобы применить эту формулу в знаменателе, у нас какая-то произвольная координата по кривой c1 стоит, а здесь уже какая-то фиксированная таита. Uh, the formal identity. You take this formal variable x and... Да-да, да, я понимаю, но uh -huh. чтобы применить эту формулу к нашему mm -hmm. случаю, yes. у нас в знаменателе стоит t минус t житы. Yes. А здесь таита и t житы это точки в k. А у нас э, в знаменателе какая-то функция минус число, грубо говоря. So we, нужно как-то подставить. Под, 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 под
the rest of the simple pole function is just the coefficient of, of t inverse. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So the, the, the idea was uh, to reduce the computation of uh, residue of higher pole uh, to the residue of simple poles. And we already, already computed the residue of simple poles. Sure, okay, so we, we know what we have here. When we write down the, this sum of residues, we, we know what they are. We only have, so, so they're, they're just numbers. And we just have to sum up these numbers. And this is some formal calculation with, with numbers. And uh, it follows from Lagrange inter interpolation formula. Okay. Uh, so, so the desired sum of residues is um, the coefficient of uh, x to the power n minus one above, and so it's zero. Uh, okay, so, so this was the proof. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I mm, confused it very much, uh, but then may, maybe uh, this will have some positive consequence, namely you will like uh, the Tate approach to residues uh, where there is no confusion um, and very elegant computation. Uh, okay, yes. Вот, вот в Кэмфе еще почему-то берут копределы вот этой суммы. Вот, что это за копредел? Зачем его брать? Ah, no, no, it's not, not, no, it's not co-limit, it's just limit. Uh, and, uh, well, maybe it makes sense over complex numbers when there is some topology. Uh, so so they, uh, the point was to, to compute some uh, co-boundary map. Uh, and we want to compute this co-boundary map uh, so it was uh, a map of sheaves over uh, c to the power n, uh, and uh, we want uh, delta over the diagonal, uh, and we can compute. Uh, delta at uh, C2, uh, C3, and so on. Oh, sorry. C n plus one, uh, when they're all distinct. Uh, okay. Uh, but then if, if your map of sheaves, the sheaves are locally free sheaves. So if you see that the map of sheaves uh, is zero uh, on some open subset, then it's identically zero. Zero uh, on this complement uh, C to the power N minus all the diagonals. So where all the points are distinct. Uh, hence, uh, the delta is identically zero everywhere. In particular, its fiber over the main diagonal over NC is zero. Okay. And if, if you are over complex numbers, which have topology, you can uh, well, state in, in usual analytical terms that uh, the value at diagonal is the limit of nearby values, and the nearby values is zero, so the value at diagonal is zero. Okay, but actually you don't need any topology and any notion of limit. You just need to compute it away from diagonals. So this will guarantee that it's zero everywhere. Okay. No, thank you. Thank you. Um, fine. Uh, so uh, we are done with. Uh, with the residues, uh, and uh, now the, the very close notion is uh, the notion of trace morphism. Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, and ag again, it's very uh, natural in Tate's approach. In fact, in, in Tate's approach, residues are defined as traces. Uh, though these traces are, are taken over some infinite dimensional spaces. Uh, so, well, it's some non trivial construction, uh, but very beautiful. Mm, and uh, in, in, in this Tate formalism, the tr tr trace morphism comes. So to say, for free. Um, so we take a separable morphism, uh, well, dominant morphism. Uh, from one curve to another one. Uh, and um, then uh, it is finite mm, and a fine. Uh, uh, so so we can compute uh, the first cohomology uh, of the dualizing sheaf uh, upstairs as the first cohomology of, of the direct image. Yeah, there are no, no higher direct images for a fine morphism. Okay, uh, and um, now uh, th these two are equal. Uh, in particular, th there is an, an identity morphism between them. But this identity morphism between them uh, by shared duality uh, induces um, a morphism uh, between she. Okay, so, so you know that uh, this is just the ground field K. Uh, and so you mm, know that this is also mm, uh, the ground field K. Uh, okay, uh, so th th there is such, such a map, but but but, but by ser duality, uh, we obtain uh, the dual. Mm, map uh, from uh, the push forward uh, of the canonical class uh, upstairs to the canonical class downstairs. Uh, and this, this map is called the trace. Okay, so, so this trace but by definition is ser dual to the uh, composition of canonical identification uh, or the first cohomology of dualizing sheaf uh, on C with um, the, well, how to say it, with decomposition of computation of first cohomology uh, in two steps. F first, you take push forward to the base, and then there you take the first cohomology. Okay. So, 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 yeah. Ah, because, we, because we will compute it uh, in a moment, uh, and we will see that it is computed via trace. Mm. Uh, again, uh, we have map on the first cohomologies, and we yeah. want to uh, construct a map between sheets. Right, uh, right. but and... you know that the first cohomology uh, is du dual to the uh, to the zeroth cohomology of uh, the dual sheaf, right? So, so. This the transpose of this identification is the map on of the uh, of dual sheets, uh, and th th that's what you have. But it's a map on glo global sections, I believe. Uh, right, right. But but the how to say the the, the, um, the, the global sections of uh, of the um, well, how to say. It? Uh, the global sections of um, uh, S with coefficients uh, in uh, 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 in F to push forward omega C dual uh, tensor omega S are the same as just Holmes over OS from uh, 
the push forward of omega c to omega s. Okay, I see. So we have we have such a global uh, a global section, and uh, you obtain such a homomorphism of sheets. Okay, uh, and the, uh, it is called trace because it can be explicitly computed. Uh, Uh, so we have um, the uh, space of rational sections uh, of this push forward. Uh, okay, uh, and um, from here you will have uh, the map to rational sections of uh, the dualizing sheaf uh, on the base. Uh, and uh, it, it comes just um, uh, 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 so th this is a module o over uh, um, the rational function on S. Uh, just a vector space. This vector space. Uh, and uh, this is a vector space over um, the region functions on C. Uh, and um, in fact, both vector spaces are, are one dimensional. Uh, yeah, uh, because uh, bo both sheaves are. Uh, well, how to say it? the rational sections of uh, of this is the same as the rational sections just of uh, omega c, right? Uh, and the rational sections of omega c have the structure of vector space over rational functions on on c. Uh, okay, uh, and there is uh, the trace map mm, from mm, this field extension. K of C to K of S, uh, and it's mm, linear over uh, K of S. Mm, so you can extend it uh, by K of S linearity to the ration, to the to, to those vector spaces. Uh, so trace prime uh, by uh, K of S. Linearity, uh, namely from uh, rational functions, uh, rational sections of, of the push forward uh, to the rational forms uh, on the base. Mm, and just you, you take. Uh, mm, uh, any uh, push both mm, any pullback or oh, say mm, df uh, no no so, sorry sorry let's say uh, df uh, so co 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 differential of, of our map f uh, from from c to s you apply it to any uh, differential on the base, mm, then you multiply it by any function uh, on, on C, okay? Uh, and by definition, this is just uh, trace, the usual trace uh, for the field extension of G uh, multiplied by this function, uh, by, the, by this differential. This has been which guy? Just the pullback, well, you have, f from c to s uh, and gives rise to mm, the co-differential say from mm, uh, well, what is it? from uh, the pull pullback of uh, omega uh, f to omega c okay uh, 
Okay, so, so, so what I want to prove. Mm. Uh, is that um, mm, the desired trace homomorphism is uh, what we just define? Okay, so so it's just trace for, for the field extension operational function, but but uh, mm, how to say it restricted to the regular differential. Uh, okay. Mm. So, so uh, let's prove this. Mm. So, what what do we know about the about the tra tra trace of differential forms? Uh, the trace of differential forms was was defined uh, via set duality. Okay. Uh, now, um, we know that the first cohomology uh, of the dualizing sheaf uh, comes from, from a residue of any uh, rational um, differential well, with, with, with principal part with first order pole uh, of residue one. Okay. Mm. So, so we, we can compute this trace uh, in some situation, namely, uh, mm, suppose um, uh, we have point uh, B uh, upstairs, point S uh, downstairs, uh, and uh, F takes uh, one to the other, mm, and um, mm, we have a di differential uh, with the principal part with the residue one. Mm, so, so let, let's say T uh, T is a parameter mm, there uh, upstairs, and say X uniformizer downstairs. Uh, around th those points, mm, and um, then uh, this trace uh, mm, from the push forward of uh, uh, of the differentials. Uh, if if you take a pole uh, at this point downstairs. Uh, and restrict to this point, uh, then the, the value of this trace at, at this point uh, takes T uh, T over T, uh, or maybe the, the how to say the principal part. Mm, sorry. of dt over t to the principal part uh, of dx over x. Mm, okay. Uh, <coughs> this we know because um, once again, the, the, the trace what was defined via ser duality with first cohomology and you know that the first cohomology uh, they come from principal parts like this and and we, we can compute uh analytically so to say the prince the the co-boundary morphism at when we know that dt over t goes exactly to one uh and dx over x also goes exactly to one and so that they but they must correspond under this trace method uh okay and now, now we have to um, Compute uh, this tra trace prime uh, and, and to compare. Mm. So let's compute trace prime and compare. Uh, so take uh, an open subset mm, U in uh, 
be where uh, our dominant morphism was unramified, right? Because we know that there are only finitely many points of ramification, uh, and and I mean it, it's good because there we know that the um, local parameters will go to local parameters, uniformizers will go to uniformizers, um, and. Um, uh, then uh, <coughs> it suffices. Почему такая F существует, где разделенная на крыше? Because F is given. We had this morphism F from C to S. А почему такое U существует тогда? Just we, we um, well, for example, um, we had this. Um, uh, morphism uh, df star, like here in the middle of the page. Uh, yeah, it was morphism from um, one vertebral shift to another invertible shift, uh, and its co kernel was finite. Yeah, the, the quotient, the co kernel of this morphism uh, was uh, a sum of skyscraper shift. So it had a finite support. But this finite support is consists of points of, of ramification. And away from this finite support, the, it is an, an, an isomorphism. This df star is just an isomorphism. Okay, and 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 the, 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 there there is no ramification, mm. and this is the open set U that we are using. Okay. Uh, just because it's a coherent sheaf. Ah, um, A coherent Спасибо. torsion sheaf. So this yeah. kernel is a torsion coherent sheaf, so it must have a finite support. Mm. Let me write down. U is uh, C minus the support of um, the quotient uh, omega uh, C over V of star uh, omega S. Okay, uh, so mm, uh, uh, it suffices. Uh, uh, to check that uh, mm, uh, oh, well, in the U, um, mm, if we could com compute uh, this uh, trace prime of uh, G, uh, times uh, df star uh, dx uh, over f star dx. Mm. Right, so, so this d, d sorry, it's just f star x, sorry. Uh, mm. Yes, yeah, so, so downstairs dx over x is uh, the Mm -hmm. The thing which has uh, res residue one, okay, uh, and now we're capturing this, uh, and, and we get mm, the mm, trace of G in, in the sense of field extension. Okay, uh, it's it's a function downstairs, um, but we take its value at x. Okay, and uh, multiply with dx over x, and this, this is by definition. Okay, this is the def definition of our tra trace prime. If you go back here, mm, yeah, in the, in the middle of the page, then tra trace prime of g times the pullback of some differential form is just a tra trace g times this differential form. Okay, so we do nothing, and now we compute this. Uh, so how to compute uh, the tra tra trace of uh, some element and its value at a particular point? Uh, so yeah, our g is a regular function on u. Uh, 
and the, for, for this reason, we can compute its value uh, somewhere. Uh, so how to compute the value of trace? Mm, maybe somebody can say. So we have a, a function uh, on the curve C. Yeah. And then we take a trace. This is the function uh, on the base curve S. And uh, uh, I ask how to compute the value of this trace function downstairs at a point at a point x maybe to sum over all absolutely yes. yeah yeah thank you very much so this is the sum of uh, over all points c uh, in the pre-image of x uh why is the sum Like, uh... Just by definition of trace, if you want. No, or, or almost by definition of trace. Uh, so then you sum the value, sum up the values of over all these functions. Uh, and here you uh, get um, again uh, dx over x. Um, and um, and that, 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 that's what we wanted. Uh, Yeah, because uh, it, it means that uh, you just get the sum of residues. Uh, okay, so uh, of residues at uh, The point in a uh, pre image uh, of a uh, point downstairs uh, goes to uh, the residue at this point. That's what we wanted to have. And And what we do have. Okay, um, so uh, that was residues and traces and duality. Uh, and once again, um, you, you will have in, in our home in your home assignment an, alter an alternative approach to to this. Um, and uh, now let's move on uh, to the higher cohomology of higher dimensional varieties. Для чего нужен был след вот вводить такое отображение? Uh, well, uh, well, uh, you, well, you, you, you will have it in uh, some applications in exercises, but uh, um, but It, it is some sort of over local um, uh, duality statement. Uh, so um, this shared duality uh, is a claim about um, um, morphism from uh, your curve to, to a point. Uh, so, so you compute gl uh, global sections or uh, first cohomology uh, and uh, You should view this as a direct image from from curve to point, uh, the zero direct image and the higher first direct image. Okay, and, and they, they are related via shared duality. Okay, but uh, actually, uh, the shared duality makes sense for arbitrary morphisms, not necessarily from the curve to to the point, uh, but from from one curve to another curve. Is also nice, uh, and then the, 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 this trace morphism uh, is um, used in this, so to say, relative shared duality. Oh, oh, yes, yeah, so, so you take one, you take a sheaf on one curve, and you know, then you take its um, the direct image to uh, another curve, uh, and there, there is a some sort of shared duality for for this. Relative situation. And this is given by, by trace morphism. 
Спасибо. Okay. Uh, but we will, we will have it in some exercises. Uh, okay, so, so now we move to higher cohomology of higher dimensional varieties. Uh, I mean, the curves were one dimensional and uh, there were no cohomology higher than the first cohomology. We just had this resolution via uh, rational sections chief and the principal parts chief. It was a resolution of length one, so there were only zeros in the first cohomology. Uh, and now we'll compute cohomology of projective spaces, uh, of, of line bundles over projective spaces. Mm, and there we'll have cohomology of, say, for, for Pn, we'll have nth cohomology. Uh, so mm, we fix some number n. Uh, and first we'll start with computation of uh, the cohomology of, of the puncture defined space uh, with coefficients in the structure sheaf. And this uh, mm, uh, from this we'll deduce mm, uh, Cohomology of p and minus one with coefficients in O of i. Mm, oh, sorry, uh, O of uh, k. Uh, so if you remember, if you remember, uh, at some point we computed the Picard group of project project space uh, and uh, proved that uh, all the invertible sheaves were like this, just O of k. K, k is some integer, positive or negative. Uh, so the next time we'll compute the cohomology of project space with coefficients in all invertible sheaves. And today we start with some preparation. Um, so certainly uh, this has an action uh, of the zero cohomology. Um, so the global sections. Uh, of structure sheaves, they're just global functions. And we computed those. Uh, these are just uh, regular functions on a n uh, if n is uh, bigger than one. Yeah. Or uh, k of uh, t and t inverse if n is one. Yeah, if we puncture a line, then uh, the regular functions are Laurent polynomials. Uh, okay, uh, so, so let me formulate uh, an answer, but today I was very slow, so we'll prove it next time. Uh, so first of all, uh, the cohomology vanishes uh, or, except for extreme cases. Uh, okay. uh, ah, and oh, yeah, also for i bigger than n minus one, they vanish as well. Mm. And uh, mm, we already already know mm, uh, about n equals one. Uh, so when n equals one, uh, then there is no first cohomology. Uh, ah, but, but, yeah, the, the, that's contained in the in the previous claim. Uh, and zeroth cohomology is Laurent uh, mm, polynomials, as we already uh, stated before. So so this is known. There's nothing to prove here. Uh, the main point is uh, the next one. So, so if n is bigger than one, uh, then again, again, we know the zero cohomology. Uh, the, the only problem is about uh, the n, n minus first cohomology. So the zero is just the ring of uh, polynomial in x1 and so on. 
xn uh, and uh, hn minus one uh, is also sort of ring of polynomials. Uh, well, let me call it ring of polynomials in uh, delta one and so on, delta n. Mm. Uh, but those uh, delta i's uh, is so to say uh, one over x i. Uh, so what what does it mean? Uh, it means that um, uh, well you you so so the structure of the module over polynomials. Uh, is uh, this um, nilpotent structure? Yeah, so uh, x i uh, the action on delta one to the power uh, k one times so on delta uh, n to the power k n is uh, um, delta one to the power k one and so on. Then delta i to the power k i minus one. And so on, delta n to the power k n, uh, and if uh, k i was zero, then x i times this uh, polynomial is just zero. Okay, so so all the generators x i act nilpotently. Yeah, they. Mm, Degrees, degrees in, in delta, uh, and then eventually kill your uh, monomials in delta. Okay, uh, so um, well, maybe one one last word is that uh, this um, n minus first cohomology uh, is also what is called uh, the nth cohomology uh, with support in the origin uh, of uh, a and with coefficients in the structure sheet. And for, 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 for this reason, uh, I call those generators deltas. So they're like delta functions. Yeah, you see, uh, we're speaking um, of, so to say, higher functions on the affine space uh, with uh, support at zero. Yeah, and uh, well, there are, there are no functions with support at zero if the function is by vanishing almost everywhere, it's just zero. But these are sort of uh, generalized functions, distributions. Yeah, uh, and the, the, we know the distributions supported at uh, zero are the delta functions and its derivatives. So the, the, these guys are exactly derivatives of delta functions. But when you multiply derivatives of delta functions with coordinates, eventually you get zero. So th that's what happens. So this is some sort of fu functional analytic computation. Okay, so we will do this for formally uh, next time. It, it's a very easy computation, but very, very, very fundamental. Uh, okay, and I apologize for uh, confusion that reigned today. Uh, uh, thank you. And we will, will we study these cohomologies with support? Um, I don't know. Uh, m m maybe in the late spring we will. Uh, in, in fact, if you have some um, assignment for me, then please uh, feel free to give it to me. So if, if you want some particular topic, then please let me know. Because uh, I hope we'll finish uh, the basic book by Kempf uh, pretty soon, uh, maybe within three weeks, uh, and then we'll uh, move to some other topics. Uh, so if you have some suggestions for those other topics, you are very welcome. Okay, I definitely want to uh, somehow to uh, know, to, under to understand schemes better, but mm -hmm. no other uh, suggestions. Yeah, yeah. Certainly we'll have schemes uh, right after camp, uh, but then we'll have some more advanced topics. Что вы примерно планируете? Какие темы дальше разбирать? After schemes, uh, 
well maybe uh, uh, Hilbert schemes uh, and uh, maybe Fabinho splitting. If there are no other suggestions, then I would prefer Hilbert schemes and for, and Fabinho splitting. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Thank you.